Hey, Melissa here from Girl Gone Fishing, and today I am on the road halfway down to Crab Orchard, Kentucky, because tomorrow I am fishing the Bluegrass Kayak Anglers Cedar Creek Tournament. So Cedar Creek has a special place in my heart because it's where in 2018 I fished my first ever tournament. I had never been in a fishing tournament, let alone a kayak fishing tournament in my life. So I finally got the nerve to enter one, and it was at Cedar Creek. So I like to make time in my schedule to come back down here, and I really like the guys that run the Bluegrass Kayak Anglers group, so I want to support them and, uh, you know, show their group some love. Plus, I mean, Cedar Creek is such an awesome, awesome lake. So I usually treat Cedar Creek Lake as a day trip where I just drive down and back on the same day. And it's about a two and a half hour drive. So that means getting up pretty early in the morning to make it down to the ramp for launch. But this weekend is a little different because some of the Kentucky guys got an Airbnb and they invited me in on it. So this is pretty cool. I'm coming down on Friday afternoon. We're gonna cook some dinner and then uh, up early tomorrow for a Cedar Creek Lake tournament. And hopefully I find some of those big bass. made it here is the airbnb that the guys booked it's on this little farm down here in kentucky super cute so come here and check it out it's an awesome little place here it's not well not even little look at all this space big beautiful kitchen now we just need like three or four more people to show up and we can start grilling steaks for dinner Oh my gosh, cuteness. Hi, babies. Hi. <coughs> oh, it's so much You're all cuteness. Right. Wow. It's <laughs> a cool place, isn't it? Hey, well, it's 6.35, lines in was 6.30, but I'm still pedaling out to my spot. I thought I had a good path going, but it's so dark, and this lake is so full of submerged trees that I veered a little to the right, and I ended up in a tree field, and I got my kayak stuck on a tree, and it was really freaking me out because it's just like pitch black out here, and my kayak was tipping on this tree, but I stayed calm, and I inched the kayak off the tree, and now I'm proceeding very slowly back to the spot I meant to be going to in the first place. So I'm gonna be a few minutes late for starting lines in, but at least I'm not swimming in the pitch black. <laughs> I, a couple years ago, I wouldn't have even launched in the dark like this. So I'm making great progress.
So I haven't had a bite since like 9.45, but I've caught seven fish. I caught, uh, but only three of them were keepers and only two of them made it to the board. And half of them were on a weightless fluke and half of them were on the frog. Yeah, I, uh, I got two shorts this morning and that was it. Yeah. I had nothing. I mean, they're, they, they're hitting in these mats. We can do this, Bert. Oh my gosh, good job. Get it, get it, get it. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Oh my gosh, that's a nice one. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Wow, that's like a 17 or something. Good job, Bert. Don't leave, you're good luck. <laughs> I'll just leave you some good luck. Fish number three, 12 and a half. All these little 12 inchers, but I'm really happy to have another fish. I need two more for my limit and then I go upgrading. I was having a big mental debate here. I really wanted to go on up the creek. I felt like the creek had less fishing pressure and I might be able to get a fish, but the other side of me said go back to the main lake where you know you have this 20 inch bass potential but there were people on all of the spots i knew out on the main lake so i went back and forth for a while don't waste time be serious do tournament stuff and in the end i decided i wanted to go up the creek so i love these uh hobie horizontal rod holders here i think it's called like a rod rack but it enables me to take my rods down and, and uh, go under the trees and explore up the creek on my links So when I got my first kayak, it was purely for paddling. I didn't know anything about fishing. I had no idea fishing was fun. I had no idea in the future I would fall in love with fishing. So I used to take my kayak down rivers and one of my favorite things to do was go up the little creeks, like explore, because when I was in a little 10 foot, six inch um, sit and paddle kayak, a little old town loon, and that thing had very shallow draft, meaning not dragging very far in the water. So I could get up all kinds of things. And I feel like I'm reliving that with this Lynx because it also like allows me to go really shallow. So in these tournaments, like right now, I've only got three fish on the board and they're 12 inches each. So I'm not doing really well in this tournament and yet I'm up a creek. <laughs> so although this creek I actually think has a lot of potential, this creek is deep. Um, I'm gonna say like, let me see. Well, this creek is this deep right now, so this is awesome. I feel like boats probably don't come back here that much, and you know, to find a place where you can get unpressured bass on Cedar Creek, that's a big deal. So I don't think I'm wasting my time this time, unlike every other time I go exploring up a creek, but I guess that's not true because maybe I find a situation where I do find a big bass, or even better, a wolf pack of giant bass. I keep hearing about these things. I'm still waiting for my wolf pack of giant bass but I guess that means I have to keep pedaling and keep moving or I'll never find it. <laughs> oh, I love going up little creeks. I love my links. I don't know if that's flipping or pitching. I don't know, it's one of those two and I've been working on it. I believe the point of it is to control the release so that you can target something very specific, like a very small hole in the uh, lily pads or something, and that the, the splash is very minimal. <laughs> and so far when I do it, it's like, <laughs> but you know, there's always a learning curve. I can see that it's gonna be really useful and cool though. Oh, 
they're getting smaller. The grass on this lake is so green and so healthy. But the problem is, is there is a lot of grass, like over a lot of area, and it's really hard to do that whole find the grass, find the bass thing because there's so much beautiful grass that it doesn't all seem to hold bass. But there's lots to target. So that's the three o'clock lines out alarm. That means tournament's over, I can't do any more. And I ended up somewhere near the bottom. I got three fish all in the 12 inch range. Ended up with like 37 and a half inches, I think. So not very good. I really wanted my five fish limit. This lake has some like big 19, 20, 21 inch fish in here. And uh, I wanted some of those. I thought I had a pretty productive tournament. Like I took about three minutes to eat for a little lunch break and outside of that, I was casting and I tried a good mix of moving baits and finesse baits. I fished fast, I fished slow, top, bottom, I, I moved around, I mean I covered water. I didn't get fish. Uh, I got like 10 or 11 fish total. Um, only five of them were keepers and only three of those keepers made it in the boat. So for the first time in a long time I lost fish at the boat. Um, just being stupid I guess uh, <laughs> I don't know I'll have to watch the tape and see what went wrong and uh, make sure it doesn't happen again because I just don't catch enough fish that I can be losing them <laughs> any fish I get I need in the boat on the board in the picture <laughs> can't make mistakes like that Second place with 89 and three quarter inches, taking home $305, Paul Avery. First place taking home $490 with 93 inches, Adam Shepard. All right, well, that's a wrap for the Bluegrass Kayak Anglers Cedar Creek Tournament. Uh, always love coming down here. Like, really like fishing this lake. Really like these guys. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you on the water on the next one.